now I'm going to leap to the present and to two photographers, uh, and I'll, again, I'll try to do this quickly, who sort of occupy the walls of Versailles and Arbus and are seen very much in the art world in similar terms. Capiopi is the sort of Brassai of her term, she may, of her, her um, time. She makes these gorgeous portraits of FDMs or female to male transsexuals, butchers, trans men. Um, and these photographs have become extremely famous. Catherine Opie had a retrospective at the Guggenheim last year, huge national shows, internationally shows her work, etc., etc. Um, Kathy Opie, like Versailles, takes these very formal, very stylized, very composed pictures that are seen as it's irrelevant what they're of, the composition makes them art. They simply are art. Who cares if it's a pervert or a, a stalker type of figure in the image? This is simply art. And um, um, she also takes lots of pictures of freeways in LA, of, of surfers in Malibu, ice houses in Minnesota, and therefore she's seen in general as a brilliant artist. Okay? Della Grace Volcano is the Diane Arbus of his time. He is seen as a documenter of the freakish, of the subcultural, of night worlds, of these alternative kinds of communities. And he has not had the same kinds of success that Kathy Opie has. His works are not bought and sold in the art market, but he has a vast presence and circulation in subcultural worlds in a number of different um, countries around the world. And this is a book that he and I did together. Now, interestingly enough, even though he's sort of seen as a Diane Arbus type, Volcano understands himself to be the brass eye of his time. And he made a series of photographs that tried to recreate the brass eye photographs. And notice how they do. Um, he gets the darkness just right. These are very moody, dark, uh, intricate photographs. But he, he has some of the formal composition, but he deliberately also puts himself in the frame. And so you can see him in the background, there's a mirror, and you see him taking the photograph. So while Brassai occasionally comes into the frame, but mostly is absent, Del Grace Volcano sees himself as part of the subculture that he's documenting, and therefore inserts himself into it. This is an interesting trio, three butchers together. Um, suggesting a community rather than just the couple or the singular, right? So instead of just the couple, these two people found each other, they make a sort of heterosexually recognizable frame, or a singular person who is the, the sort of lonely figure of queerness. He has these images that are very much, ah, oh, that one's missing, very, very much about um, community. Okay, now I'm, I think I'm about five minutes, did you say? Right, five minutes. So I'm going to wind down, uh, and I'm just going to show you a series of other contemporary photographs that I think do interesting things uh, by way of representing queerness. This is a Spanish um, collaborative couple, they're both butchers actually, Cabello Caselle, and they mostly make photographs um, suggesting the violence of collaboration and of couplehood. Okay, so they're often both in the picture, like in this one, but they also are often pointing to the, the ways in which, in a couple, people merge, and they sort of take on pieces of each other. So in interviews, for example, people are always like, which one of you is Cabello? Which one is Casille? And they won't say. They refuse. They refuse to be identifiable as individuals, and they think of themselves as a unit of two. Okay, um, it's a sort of comment on the couple form. This one is an interesting shot, uh, uh, self-portrait um, after the as a fountain, self-portrait as a fountain, and of course they we think that these are two men because they're at urinals, um, but we also notice that the image is taken in a mirror. What we're looking at is a mirror image of them in the bathroom with their backs to the mirror, okay? So there's doubling in every place. The two, couple, the two people are doubled. This is a, a, the doubled image already. Um, and this notion of being a self-portrait as a fountain, as if being a fountain is the, some sort of male form because men stand up 
to be um, something like this. So um, it's a uh, it's kind of a mischievous image, um, if you like. And they do a lot of these kinds of images. Here's another one. The two of them, again, you never can see their faces because they don't want to be identifiable and individuated. So here we have self-portrait um, as the end of the party. And again, there's something here about fluidity. Um, the two of them, indistinguishable, merged, and yet, yet there are still small differences between them. Um, and there's also something about capturing the motion of water that is there in both of the, the pictures that seems interesting to me. My last picture, this is a, a contemporary fashion photographer, Cass Bird. And Cass Bird takes a lot of pictures of models, um, just conventional female models. But in his spare time, he glamorizes butchers. He takes pictures of masculine women and turns them into glamorous um, pinups. And this one is so great. I look just like my daddy, 2003. And here he's wearing a certain kind of fashion that in 2003, 2004, there was a big fashion in the US for wearing these trucker caps. They were called trucker caps, you know, like that people who drive trucks would wear. And they were very working class, gritty, masculine. And no one knew where this trend came from. You know how fashion trends are. One day, everyone's wearing little polo caps, and then the next day, everyone's got a trucker cap. And magazines were like, where did these trucker caps come from? And they were finally attributed to Ashton Kutcher. I don't know if you know who he is. <laughs> finally, there was like, Ashton Kutcher began the trucker cap phase. And Cass Bird's point was, lesbians, butchers have been wearing trucker caps for a very long time. But no one would ever suggest that a fashion trend began with lesbians. Lesbians are always, and this is why these images are so clever, are always derivative. They're always mirror images of something that is original elsewhere, right? So this image is fantastic because it sort of situates the butch, who's usually, think back to the Gertrude Stein picture, represented as dowdy, unglamorous, the antithesis of anything having to do with fashion or trends or originality. Here she takes this on. Um, and gives you the acute butch where the trucker cap who began the phrase, but then makes a little comment again on derivation, on inauthenticity, which is what we began today. I look just like my daddy. In other words, you know, this is an originality, but I have an original, and the original is not my mother, it's my father. So the un speakable connection between the butch and the father rather than the butch and the mother here is spoken. And I'll end there. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Harrison. I'm sure you all have lots of questions, but let's take a short break and we'll come back here to discuss your questions. And of um, uh, what it is to study career theory. Please come back by um, 4.20. No, 4.23. <laughs> 4.23? 25? 4.25. Sorry. So you have seven minutes. Um, we sh seven minutes. Huh? Yeah. Just seven. give people ten minutes. <laughs> Just, just come back by 4.30. We strongly, we strongly encourage undergraduates and MA students to sit in the front when you come back after the break. <laughs>